By the 1530s, the Inca Empire was enormous. It stretched along the length of the Andes, from modern-day Ecuador to central Chile, a distance of two and a half thousand miles. But just 500 miles to the north began the colonies of Central America and the Caribbean, prized possessions of the Spanish Empire. At the time, the Spanish king controlled a third of mainland Europe, but Spain itself had only recently become a unified state, having fought off 700 years of occupation by Islamic Moors. It was still a rural society. Most of the conquistadors came from villages and small towns in the heart of the country. Towns like Trujillo, where Pizarro grew up. He spent much of his childhood here, working as a swineherd in the fields nearby. Today he's remembered as a great warrior. His statue dominates the main square in Trujillo. And his family home has been turned into a museum. Jared Diamond has come here to explore the world of the conquistadors and understand the secret of their success. This is Francisco Pizarro, a Spaniard who conquered the most powerful state in the New World, the Inca Empire. Why did Pizarro and his men conquer the Incas instead of the other way around? Seems like a simple question. The answer isn't immediately obvious. After all, Pissarro started out as a rather ordinary person, and Trujillo here is a rather ordinary town. So what is it that gave Pissarro and his men this enormous power? 